My name is Dr. Ravi Srinivasa, and I'm an interventional radiologist at UCLA. Today's topic is on peripheral artery disease. Do you have it, and what can you do about it? To start off, what is an interventional radiologist? An interventional radiologist is a specialist in minimally invasive procedures. We use miniaturized devices through very small incisions to perform very complex procedures. Peripheral artery disease is a disease that affects up to 8 to 12 million Americans every year. Leg pain is just one manifestation of peripheral artery disease. The spectrum of disease may involve skin discoloration, pain with walking, or pain at rest. Uh, and eventually this can even progress to leg ulcers. Plaque buildup over time de develops within the blood vessels leading to the legs and to the arms. This plaque buildup can also affect other blood vessel circulations including the vessels that lead to your brain uh, causing strokes or mini strokes. Um, it can also involve the vessels that lead to your vessels in your abdomen and cause patients to have pain with eating. Um, it can also involve the vessels that lead to the kidneys and may result in flank pain, high blood pressure, or poor kidney function. Whatever circulation that's affected is essentially going to be uh, not receive enough blood flow, and as a result, it's going to have a hard time keeping up with the demand for that blood flow. The symptoms will be related to that vascular distribution. Plaque buildup can happen in blood vessels uh, for a variety of reasons. Typically, this relates to lifestyle factors such as diet. So if you had a diet that was high in cholesterol or high in fatty content, uh, you're more likely to develop plaques within your blood vessels. A history of smoking, including if it was in the past, also puts you at increased risk of having plaque buildup within your blood vessels. Genetic factors, including a family history of uh, peripheral artery disease, also puts you at increased risk of having uh, peripheral artery disease. As you get older, uh, you are also at increased risk of having PAD. Um, heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure uh, are also factors that may also relate to PAD. Patients who are on dialysis or who have kidney disease are also at a greater risk of having peripheral artery disease. These areas of narrowing within blood vessels typically start as a very focal area of narrowing. Over time, this eventually progresses to a complete occlusion. Typically, the body finds a way to get blood flow around this occlusion. Eventually, collaterals will develop and the blood flow will find a way to get around that blockage. This can take time and as a result, uh, you may be miserable with leg pain or having difficulty walking and symptoms until, that bypa until the collaterals kind of develop. So here's a schematic kind of showing the uh, spectrum of disease. On the left, you can see a normal blood vessel. Here in the middle, you can see a area of atherosclerotic plaque buildup within a blood vessel. And here on the end, you can see a complete occlusion of the blood vessel with development of collateral vessels. PAD is relatively easy to diagnose. We have PAD clinics at both our Calabasas and Santa Clarita locations. Typically, like I said, your legs will feel sore, uh, and then you may eventually progress to having difficulty walking up a flight of stairs. The most common misconception for arterial disease is venous disease. Uh, venous disease presents slightly differently, so typically with leg heaviness, swelling, pain, itching, uh, and these symptoms are typically worse at the end of the day. So we have a comprehensive peripheral artery disease center at our, both our Santa Clarita and our uh, Calabasas locations. Um, the workup starts with a clinic visit and lab work where we'll check some blood counts, check your cholesterol levels, and check a metabolic profile. Um, we'll also do a physical exam, uh, including a specific exam tailored to your symptoms uh, that may involve uh, looking at your legs to look for skin discoloration or ulcers, uh, or may involve looking at your arms for any symptoms or, or findings on the skin that may be indicative of a problem. Uh, imaging uh, is also done at both our outpatient locations. Uh, we may start with an ultrasound and then may need a CAT scan or an MRI scan to evaluate things further. So what can we do about peripheral artery disease? So it starts off with medical management. So that involves controlling your blood pressure, uh, controlling your cholesterol levels or reducing your cholesterol levels to get them into the normal range. Uh, smoking cessation is again a very important component of treating peripheral artery disease. Um, the interventional options uh, include minimally invasive procedures, uh, which may involve using an x-ray camera to inject contrast dye into the blood vessels and map out the blood flow. Uh, and if we see any blockages or narrowings within the blood vessels, then we can perform a variety of different interventions. 
This may involve doing an angioplasty or using a balloon to stretch open the blood vessel, doing an atherectomy or using a device to basically shave the calcium from inside the blood vessel, or putting in a stent, which is basically a metallic device to hold the blood vessel open. Sometimes you may need something more invasive, such as surgery or a surgical bypass to bypass an area of occlusion. Here's, a, uh, again, going back to that schematic, um, here you can see that atherosclerotic plaque again and using a balloon to stretch open that area and then it restoring flow to the vessel. Here in the middle, we see an atherosclerotic plaque that we've now put in a stent to open up the blood vessel. And then in some instances, it's a complete occlusion and we have to use an atherectomy device to essentially drill through or bore through that occlusion and shave off the calcium or the plaque that's built up within the blood vessel. Ultimately, we'll put a stent in at the end of that. So what can you expect if you're going to have a procedure? So you're going to have nothing to eat the night before. Um, we'll usually start an IV on the day of the procedure, uh, just about an hour prior to the procedure. Um, you'll get moderate sedation, which involves a twilight sedation where you're sleepy and groggy, uh, but not completely out. The access point will either be from the wrist or the groin, uh, and the procedure lasts usually about 45 minutes. So the risks of the procedure include bleeding, uh, infection, or inability to cross the lesion uh, using minimally invasive techniques. Uh, this may necessitate uh, performing a surgical bypass. Uh, here's a picture of our pre-procedure area and a picture of our angiography suite, uh, which is basically the live x-ray camera that we use to perform your procedure. If you'd like to make an appointment to schedule a procedure, uh, feel free to call our PAD clinics at either Calabasas or Santa Clarita. Uh, we have three physicians currently performing interventions at our uh, outpatient sites. Uh, they include Dr. Ronaday, myself, and Dr. Stewart. Thank you for your attention.